Hello everyone and welcome to DCS. I assume you're new to DCS since you've decided to step into the SU25T Frogfoot. So I will treat these videos in that manner. We have a lot to talk about and some of these videos will be long. However, if you wish to skip around to what you need, everything has been timestamped below. Let's get started. I would like to thank Thrustmaster for sponsoring this video and channel. More on that later. DCS can be downloaded from two sources. You have the standalone version you can grab from the ED website, or you can download it through Steam. Both versions are identical. However, the standalone version comes with more perks, such as a two-week free trial for participating modules. Modules are what we call the DLCs here, such as planes or choppers. 50% off anything in the cart on your first purchase for participating modules, and ED miles you can use to get some percent off of your future purchases. None of this is applicable through the Steam version. Whichever version you get then comes in two additional flavors. You can either download the stable branch or the open beta branch. Everybody is on the open beta because it gets updated roughly every other week, while stable might get the update once a month or two months. Frankly, the stable version is really not any more stable than the open beta. So my recommendation is the standalone open beta version. Download and install it. A word of caution. DCS likes to be on an SSD or M.2. If you install DCS on a hard drive, expect extremely long loading times and possible stuttering. Now, while it's downloading, make sure to create an account here. Everything you buy will be linked to this account, and you're going to be using this to log into DCS. If you already have a DCS account through Steam, then you can link your Steam account to the standalone version. However, you cannot go from standalone to Steam. Check the description on how to do that. Okay, now that you've installed DCS and logged in, here we are in the main menu. The music is probably really loud right now, so let's really quickly turn that down, yeah? Okay, now that we can hear again, let's talk about the graphics settings. Now, I obviously cannot take into account every single possible situation based on all your PC configurations. However, our dear friend Special K has graciously created a quick PDF guide to give you a baseline idea of what you can set some of your graphics settings to just to get started. You can try to tune this stuff later on your own time, but for now it should give you a you know rough start. Now he has included some useful information on how DCS handles some of the important stuff as well as some tuning tips. Uh, do not ignore these. DCS is not like most other games, trust us. You can either pause the video to read what all of this says or you can download the file in the description below. However, there is only one thing missing from this, and that would be about page filing. In the description below, you will find a link on how to increase your page file in case you have low RAM. Now, DCS wants a minimum of 16 gigabytes of RAM, though that is not enough for multiplayer on some heavily scripted servers. So 32 gigabytes of RAM is recommended for the most optimal experience. Now, yeah, I know that's a lot, but also welcome to simming in 2022. So increasing your page file in Windows will help you when your physical RAM has reached its limit. Normally when you overfill the RAM, the game will just straight up crash for you. The page file recommendations are in the PDF. When you do this, make sure that you set the recommended page file amount for both the minimum and maximum to the same value. But most importantly, make sure that your page file is going to the fastest drive that you have available. If all you have is a hard drive, well, don't expect this trick to help you out too much. If you're in the market for an entry-level joystick and throttle, then I have a coupon code for 15% off in the description below for the Thrustmaster T-Flight HOTAS 1. It's a decent start and definitely vastly superior to playing with just a mouse and keyboard. Let's take a look at a few options in the game and miscellaneous sections. Do not skip this part. Don't click away. Trust me, there are some parts here that will negatively affect your DCS experience if you don't check some of these options. Starting at the gameplay tab, the game flight and game avionics mode must be turned off. If you fail to do this, you are going to have a bad time. Turn it off, if it's not already done, and never look back. As far as most of these other options down here, it's all really personal preference, and that will affect your single player experience. Just know that in campaigns and multiplayer, the servo will force these options on or off, and you have no say in any of that. Turning off mirrors here might save you up to 20 FPS in some cases. You can still turn mirrors back on when you want in-game with a keyboard shortcut, but generally mirrors in a cockpit will eat your frames up, especially if you have a potato PC. The editor icon style is personal preference. I like the Russian style because on the map everything looks like this, where you can clearly see the direction of the aircraft on the F-10 map, while the NATO style looks like this. Your choice. 
As far as the avionics language is concerned, I would stick with the English over native, as you will otherwise have a Russian heads-up display, which honestly doesn't help you much. Set birds to zero. You don't actually see any birds. It's just a script that puts your engines out randomly, depending on the percentage you put here. It's kind of annoying. For presets, you can always just check this and hit the simulation button, which will set a lot of your stuff for you. But it also changes some other options uh, that I like my own way, as you can see on this gameplay tab overall. So I just kind of do it all manually instead. Okay, on to miscellaneous tab. Head movement by G-forces in cockpit can be really painful in some planes over others as it makes your head go so low that it's hard to read the heads up display when you're pulling high G's. So I generally recommend this to be set to off. Force feedback is another extremely important option to make sure that it's checked off. It causes problems if left on for many users. Make sure that the random system failures is set unchecked as well. You will just have random failures at random points in your flight that you can't even do anything about. So check this on if you want to have fun crashing and burning for no reason whatsoever. But you know, for the rest of us, just leave it off. There are options here for overlays. I personally hate them and turn them off, but you can do what you like here. Some people like being able to see if they've done damage to something or not while training but usually this should be unchecked as you progress on in your training. Under audio, it's all personal preference. DCS can be very loud. Engines and external stuff can conflict with other things and make for a very deafening experience. Try my settings out for now and tune to your liking. However, I would leave here like in helmet off as it just muffles everything to simulate what wearing a helmet would be like. If you want subtitles to be on while on a training mission or if you're in a campaign, when they give you instructions to be displayed on top, you may want to leave the subtitles option checked on. By the way, if you're experiencing problems where your game volume is dropping whenever you're talking or somebody else is talking through Discord or through the in-game voice chat, then you need to do two things. First, go to your desktop, right click on your sound, go to sounds, then go over to communications and make sure this is set to do nothing. Apply OK. Then for your Discord, go to your options here, go to your voice and video, scroll all the way down to attenuation, make sure this is at zero, and click this off. Under the special tab, I would make sure that for Capto, Leap, and VR Free, you have those checked off. Unless you're using that, of course. Since you won't own many or any modules yet, other than the two free planes you get with DCS, you won't see any of these other little options here. So you can just click on the SU25 T1. If you've installed a customized cockpit mod that changes the interior of your cockpit to some other higher resolution texture or language, like I have in my case, you will actually activate that through this option right here. As you can see, I have an English option over the native Russian one, and it's just easier to work with it like that. You can find these by simply Googling around for it or through the DCS website under the user section where there are tons and tons of mods available to spice up the game. A word of caution, many mods are not supported online and will taint your client so that you cannot join the servers. It's a matter of what passes integrity checks or not. You can usually tell if you go to the multiplayer section and check if your green shield on top is green or red. If it's red, it means something isn't passing integrity checks. If you click or hover your mouse over it, it will tell you what files it doesn't like. Another word of caution is that many mods are old and unsupported. They can conflict with DCS or with each other and can cause instability or crashing. So while you're learning, I would highly recommend that you leave DCS in its vanilla state and start exploring with mods later on down the road.